Ha! Hey everyone, Hassan here. Welcome to the world of Ha. Today I am back with a very special review. This is Wave 2 of the Marvel Legends series figures for Avengers Infinity War. So, I've, I've bought a couple of Marvel Legends series. They're, they're pretty cool, and especially with Avengers Infinity War just being so awesome. I absolutely love the movie. Saw it twice. It's so good. I had to pick up these figures, right? I got the first wave of figures, which had uh, the Iron Spider, it had Captain America, it had Iron Man. There are a couple of other figures as well, um, including the villain Proxima Midnight, and some other non-Avengers Infinity War figures, but there was a Build-A-Figure piece in each of them to create Thanos, which looks epic, right? And then they had a special two-pack with Scarlet Witch and the Vision. So I got those. Awesome figures, great stuff. So now we have the second wave. And this uh, Build-A-Figure line is for Cull Obsidian, one of the members of the Black Order, that big giant one uh, that uh, was featured in the movie. I'm not gonna say too much. Even though the movie's been out for a few weeks, I'm not gonna spoil uh, much, so don't worry about that, unless the toys spoil things, because there's a little bit of a spoiler in one of the toys. But anyways, uh, here they are. So in this wave, let me kind of move my camera a little bit closer and show you what is actually featured in this wave. So, from Avengers Infinity War, we have uh, two figures, basically. So even though these are kind of representing Infinity War, there's really two figures from Infinity War. We have Thor right here. Um, so there he is. So we'll open him up and take a, a close look soon. But there's Thor, and then the back of the box you can see uh, his little bio and everything right there, so you can pause the video and read that if you would like. Uh, but this is the Build-A-Figure for Cull Obsidian. So there he is right there. That is what he looks like all combined, which is really exciting. So there's that. Then we also have Black Widow right here, who comes with a uh, big part of Cull Obsidian, as you can see right there, but also a couple of other extra accessories. So there she is right there. There's the figure and her little bio as well, so you can read that right there. Okay, but also this wave actually features some things from the upcoming Ant-Man and the Wasp movie, uh, the next movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So we have Ant-Man himself right here. Look at that smug face, which is which is great. So we'll take an up-close look once I open them up, but uh, yeah, these figures already just look awesome. I'm so excited about this. So a really cool image of Ant-Man right there, his little bio talking about Scott Lang. So there he is. Really, really cool. And then of course, it wouldn't be Ant-Man and the Wasp without the Wasp. So there she is right there. Um, two alternate heads as well. So you have like the mask or uh, just her face, which is, which is really cool. And there's Cull Obsidian's face included right there. Really cool image on the back as well. Um, awesome stuff. So we have Hope Van Dyne in action figure form right here. So can't wait for this movie. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of fun, I'm sure. The trailer looks really cool, but there's that. So aside from Avengers Infinity War and Ant-Man and the Wasp, they're going to throw in a couple of other random figures from Marvel Comics in order to get you to buy the figures, because some, some people wouldn't buy them anyway. So if you want the to build a, build a figure for Call Obsidian, you're going to have to get Marvel's Black Knight right here. I have no clue about anything about this character. Um, so FYI on that, I have no idea who the Black Knight is. Uh, really interesting looking, but he does come with uh, one of the legs for Call Obsidian. So very important in order to build a figure right there. So it looks like apparently he's an expert horseman, horseman and superior swordsman. So, uh, interesting. No clear allegiances, apparently. So maybe sometimes he's a villain? I don't know. Or maybe he just does his own thing. But, uh, yeah, really, really interesting. And then they also have Malekith right here. So, yeah, again, I don't know who Malekith is. So... Very interesting. I, I feel like Malekith, there was a, wasn't there a Malekith in Thor The Dark World? Or am I thinking of somebody else? One of the Dark Elves? Or is this somebody different? Oh, the ruler of the Dark Elves. Yes. Okay, so maybe there was. Um, or at least maybe I've heard of the character around that time. Although this is not based on the one from Thor The Dark World. This is uh, based on, I guess, the one from the comics and stuff. So, or, or maybe from some show, or I don't know. But uh, regardless, um... 
There he is right there. So very, very interesting. So these are the six figures in the Build-A-Figure Cull Obsidian line. So uh, I'm really excited to check these out. So without further ado, let's get these open and take a look. All right, so I have Wave 2 out of the packaging, and here they are. They look uh, really cool. I, I am actually really digging these figures. The, the two non-Marvel Cinematic Universe figures, I don't really particularly care much for. Uh, maybe fans of those characters will love those figures. I don't have any attachment to those characters, but the other four, I think are really, really cool. So, let's get to it. Uh, let's actually start with the Infinity War figure. So let's kind of move these other guys off to the side here and focus on Avengers Infinity War. Let's start with Black Widow, actually. So um, Black Widow actually comes with a bunch of accessories. So let me kind of show all of that first before we get into the figure itself. So she has these kind of two little things that I don't know if these are little like taser guns, I think. I can't remember, to be completely honest, in the movie. So they kind of just sort of sit in there as you can see, so there's there's uh, one for each side. Um, they don't like stay like stand super well, but I mean, you know, they're not gonna fall out. They um, so yeah, it's a bit of a snug fit. It works. Um, so you have that. Then she actually also comes with two additional um, fists right here. So if you want closed fists, you have those as an option. I'm gonna leave her open hand. So that way she can grab her other weapons, which are these little um, batons right here, as you can see. But what's cool about these is they can actually connect together. So she can hold it as, as one giant weapon too, which is pretty cool. Um, so, you know, you can either have her hold them individually, which looks pretty great. Or again, you can have the combined version like so, which also looks pretty cool. So either way, um, you can have some, some really neat poses and, and stuff that you can do with these weapons. So I like the, the versatility. Now she does come with the main body for Call Obsidian, so I'm gonna do the build a figure a little bit later, but just FYI, she comes with the main body of Call Obsidian. So let's take a look at the figure itself um, in terms of detail and then articulation. Um, I am actually, very impressed with the uh, the the faces on a lot of these figures. I they they actually did a really nice job at capturing the likeness of the characters. Like, look at that. That looks like Scarlett Johansson. Like, that is totally. It's amazing because you look at the packaging, and sometimes the packaging for toys looks better than the actual toy, right? Look at the box here um, for for this figure. That looks terrible, right? Like, look at the face. Like, it just looks so weird. But look at the actual face and how it turned out. It looks better. Um, you know, I don't know how they did it, but but it, it looks even better, I feel like. I think they actually did a really nice job with the face sculpt. So, yeah, well done. So, here is her new outfit for Avengers Infinity War. So, there it is. She's all geared up and ready to go. Um... Really cool. You know, I mean, the outfit's nothing flashy or anything. Oops, and now I'm dropping her. Um, but uh, it certainly does have a, a nice look to it. Yeah, pretty cool. So, articulation-wise, the head, you know, will rotate all the way around. Um, the arms do also rotate and upwards as well. Um, bends at the elbows. And then, of course, the, the hand does rotate. This whole arm piece actually can rotate, too. Okay? Um, as far as the legs go, they bend forward. And it's interesting because this whole piece is attached, so it kind of bends like that, which is fine because it's not bending much, so it's not going to, you know, totally mess anything up. But it's just kind of interesting how they did that. Uh, it does bend apart a little bit. Uh, this whole piece would rotate, however, it can't because of that, though. So that does hinder a little bit of the rotation. Not that you would rotate her leg backwards anyways, but just keep that in mind. Um, double joint at the knee. And then the feet here do move forward and kind of side to side, you know, and back. Sort of your standard articulation that you have for, for the feet there. So pretty decent articulation, actually, um, for... Uh, for a female figure, because sometimes the female figures don't actually have that great articulation, you know? So it's actually pretty decent, and it gives you some versatility for uh, some some nice poses, especially with her, her weapons. 
like she's, you know, ready to to fight. Let's see if I can get a, a nice little pose here just to show you what the figure is capable of. The only thing sometimes is just the feet is finding the balance, I guess. But otherwise, um, lots of versatility there. Yeah, look at that. That looks really cool. So I think they did a really nice job with, uh, with that figure. All right, so let's bring in Thor, the other Avengers Infinity War character that we have here. So here he is. Now, fair warning, if you can't tell from the toy already, spoiler alert for Avengers Infinity War. So for the next uh, 15, 20 seconds, I'm going to be talking spoilers from Avengers Infinity War. So skip ahead, like maybe 30 seconds just to be safe uh, if you don't want to be spoiled. So they actually chose to use the face without the eye patch. So Rocket Raccoon gives him the other little eye in the movie. So they used that sculpt uh, instead of the one with the eye patch. And he actually has Stormbreaker as well as featured in the new movie. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now we're back uh, and no more spoilers or anything, but uh, here we have it. So let's take a look at the uh, weapon by itself. And by the way, Thor actually comes with um, the left arm for a Cull Obsidian. So he comes with the left arm, so keep that in mind. Okay, so here is the weapon right here, and it actually has this effect piece which does come off. So if you don't want the effect piece, you can take it off, and here's the, the weapon as is. So, um, pretty cool looking though. Um, you know, I do dig the effects piece. You kind of have to to get it to be wrapped around a little bit to, to make it look okay. Otherwise, it just looks kind of weird hanging like that. So you want to sort of dangle it around it to really give it that that effect that they're trying to go for. Something like that. So it looks like it's like attached to it, sort of. Um, but it works, you know? It definitely looks pretty cool. And here's the Thor figure. Um, he actually looks really cool. I do dig the design. He actually feels... Like, I don't, he just feels powerful. Just the suit, I don't know what it is. Like, maybe it's just because he's so buff and stuff, but, like, he just, he feels tough. And, um, obviously in the movie he is as well. So it's, it's really cool how they were able to capture that. Uh, the face is, is decent. Um, it doesn't completely look, uh, like Chris Hemsworth, but, um, it's pretty good, though. I, I do have to say. From the front, you know, I feel like they could have done maybe a teeny bit better, but you look at it like this from the side, I can see it a little bit more. Um, so I think they did a pretty good job, all things considered, even down to the little scar detailing right there. Um, and actually, oh man, okay, all right. Another spoiler for Infinity War, skip ahead like 10 seconds. Um, look at the eyes. The eyes both look different too. I think that's the eye that he lost because there's a scar, but you can see how the, the coloring of the pupil is different as well. So they even down to that detail. I'm actually impressed. I'm not going to lie. I didn't notice that before. Um, wow. Okay, cool. I dig that. Um, and of course his, his new haircut as well, um, carrying over from Thor Ragnarok. Um, and here's the suit. So an evolution of kind of that suit that we've seen since the first movie, um, although this looks definitely even tougher and everything. Um, yeah, I mean, really cool detailing on these figures. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with, with the stuff that they've been able to do with these, uh, these Marvel Legends figures. I mean, if this is what we have to look forward to for Power Rangers with Hasbro taking over, I am, like, incredibly excited about that, you know? Like, that's just awesome. So, articulation-wise, the head does uh, rotate all the way around and up and down. The arms do rotate around, and uh, they do move up as well, about horizontally. This entire piece rotates, um, double-jointed, elbows right here, um, and then the uh, the hand, of course, can, can rotate. Uh, then you have the this whole upper torso piece. So this whole does this whole thing does rotate and it moves up and down and side to side. So giving a lot of range of motion there. Uh, the legs, you know, move around. And this whole piece rotates. Pretty standard stuff. Double joint at the knee. The feet as well rotate around and go up and down. Um, pretty standard articulation there. Uh, then you have the cape, which is not removable, um, so keep that in mind. But it doesn't really hinder articulation too much because it can kind of, you know, be pushed back a little. So overall, I think um, some some really good articulation for for the figure here. So you know, you can have him again holding the uh, 
the weapon right here. There we go, and then I'll wrap the effects piece around it a little. And there we go. So now he has entered the battle ready to fight. So that looks pretty epic, if I do say so myself. Um, really, really cool stuff that you can do with uh, with the articulation with these figures. The detail is just great. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way that Black Widow and Thor turned out from Infinity War. Definitely some great additions to that. If, you're, if you don't care about the build figure Cull Obsidian, I still definitely recommend these two figures for Infinity War. Um, so moving on, let's go to the uh, next Marvel Cinematic Universe movie here, Ant-Man and the Wasp. So we have Ant-Man, first of all, right here. Uh, so he does come with the left leg of Cull Obsidian, and he comes with his helmet piece as well. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. But uh, here is the figure. Take a look at the detail. And I think they did a great job. Like, look at that. That is 100% Paul Rudd's face, that little smirk and everything. Like, they just captured that perfectly. The only thing is the forehead is a little big. It almost looks like his face, like somebody squeezed it from the sides a little bit, and his face is kind of oozing forward a little too much. Um, so that does look a little odd. But that being said, if you kind of just focus on the face, uh, it actually does look uh, pretty similar to uh, to Paul Rudd. So yeah, and here's the suit. I, I love the detail on the suit too, just down to the little uh, textures and stuff. I think they did a really nice job with this suit. It actually looks really, really nice. The little silver outlines, just all the detail on this thing just looks great. The Ant-Man suit looks pretty cool and I think, you know, the, the upgrades that they've done since the initial one have made some, some little improvements, but uh, they, they come a long way, and it definitely helps a lot. So really, really nice. Uh, in terms of the articulation, so, you know, the head will rotate around and move up and down, the arms. They do move up and down a little bit, not too much, but uh, they rotate. Double joint right there. Um, and then the whole hand does turn as well. Uh, this torso piece does move up and down, and then this whole upper body rotates. Um, this whole belt piece does slide a little as well, uh, which usually I'm not a big fan of, but this one actually is pretty snug and tight, so it doesn't really bother me. Other characters where the belt is all loose and moves around, that really bugs me, but this one's pretty nice and snug, so it's fine. Uh, the legs do move forward a little bit, rotates, um, double joint at the knee, and then same standard foot articulation that, you know, the other figures have. So, uh, now the other part is, again, this does have the other helmet right here. So here is the Ant-Man helmet, which looks pretty cool. So because you do have the extra helmet, you know, you can, as he was sort of posing in the box, have him, like, holding the helmet like that, which is a cool way to pose it, absolutely. You know, you can have him kind of doing something like that. But I kind of want to see him wearing the helmet, right? So that's, that's how I prefer some of these characters. I'm gonna pop off the head right here, and then let's put on the Ant-Man head. Very easy to do, actually. So there he is, as you can see. Um, pretty cool looking. You know, I think, uh, again, they did a really nice job with this figure. I think it looks awesome. So if you're a fan of Ant-Man, I definitely, definitely recommend it. All right, so then that also brings us to the next figure, which is the Wasp right here. So here she is. And so she comes with some accessories as well. So she actually has a range of accessories. Um, first of all, she comes with the head of Cull Obsidian. So right here, so crucial part right there. Uh, she also has, instead of that little uh, pack right there, she has ones with wings. So that is swappable. She comes with uh, Hope Van Dyne's face right here, so Evangeline Lilly's likeness, so you can swap that out. 
And she also comes with two different hands. Instead of the fists for hands, you have kind of these like open like palm hands like that, basically, for the character. Uh, which I kind of like these ones, especially if you put the wings on. It's almost like she's flying, so um, I'll probably swap those out. But before we get to that, let's take a look at this figure up close. Um, so yeah, really nice detail on this thing especially because you can kind of see the eyes through there as well. So I think they, they did a great job with, with that. I think that looks really cool. Um, and the gold is nice and shiny. So I'm not always used to that with, with Bandai America and their butterscotch ways, but, uh, you know, Hasbro with their Marvel Legends, they, they do it well. Um, yeah. Definitely looks pretty cool. I do like the gold on the figure. And then little bits of lines down here, a little bit of red down below. So, um, very, very interesting. Definitely gives it its unique look compared to the Ant-Man suit, which is pr predominantly red, whereas this one's got a lot of gold. So I like that it's it's got that unique look. Uh, and yet you'll see that there are similarities in the design, of course. I'm not going to spend too much time looking at it, but lots of little, like, lines that go down the characters. Um, you'll see that, like, the back part here, kind of like the little red line on the little backpack thing there. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see the obvious similarities right there, but uh, they both look really nice together. So I do dig that. And, of course, the height difference as well. I don't know if that's accurate to the movie or not, but that is uh, in the figures. So pretty cool stuff. So articulation-wise, um, so the head does, you know, rotate all the way around and up and down. The arms do have a decent amount of range of motion there. Um, the elbows do bend a little bit and the hand does rotate, but otherwise a little bit more limited articulation with the arms compared to some of the other, uh, figures that we just saw. Uh, the torso piece, so this whole thing does rotate all the way around, so it can move up and down a little bit, but not side to side. Uh, the legs, you know, a decent amount of range, especially forward, can move forward a lot. This whole piece rotates, double joint at the knee. And then, of course, your standard foot articulation that a lot of these Marvel characters have. So, pretty cool stuff overall. So, let's start swapping out some of these pieces here. So, um, I like the other hands, so I'm going to swap those out first. Okay. So, take out the closed fists and put in the other ones. And this is, it's actually very easy to do, which which I'm very happy about. It's not like those SH figure arts, which I feel like I'm going to break them every single time I do it. It actually, they come off very nicely. Um, oh, this is actually, it's not supposed to come off, is it? Um, yeah, that's not supposed to come off, but this is kind of coming off. So you have to be a little bit careful with that when you're taking off the helmet piece. It's This, this part's almost coming off, but it's not supposed to, so keep that in mind. All right, let's pop on her head right there. I can't not see, I just think of Kate from Lost every single time because I absolutely love Lost and of course, same uh, actress, but uh, yeah. All right, so here she is right there and then let's take off this little piece, very easy to, to take on and off and then you have it right here as well. So it just kind of clips on just like that. And the wings can then you know, move up, kind of like that, maybe. And there you have it. That looks really cool. I kind of wish they would have had a little bit more color on the wings, because the packaging kind of shows, like, a little bit of a blue or silverish line going across, you know. But regardless, I think it still looks cool. The only reason I say that is because I have a white background, so it sort of blends in. But if you have a different background, if you're going to display it somewhere else, then, you know, it'll be a little bit more noticeable. Um, but it looks pretty neat. I, I will say, proportion-wise, I feel like the head is a little big on, on the figure right here. Um, I don't know what it is, if it's just everything else is too tiny in proportion. It does look a little odd with, with this face on, I will say. But the face itself, I think they did a fantastic job with. Like, that 100% looks like Evangeline Lilly. Uh, like, that is totally Hope Van Dyne right there. Um... They did a really, really nice job with the face sculpt. So, again, great job there. The, the Marvel Legends lately has just been killing it with, with the face sculpts, but 
really cool. So personally, I feel like I would rather use the, uh, the wasp helmet. So I'm going to swap that out. I like them to be all ready to go superhero wise. So there you have it. And now you have her with the wings and stuff and the hands kind of like that as if she's flying away or something, you know, so that looks really cool. You can definitely have some fun poses uh, like that. So really, really neat. That is the wasp right there. So um, again, Ant-Man and the wasp. Uh, really excited to see the movie, and these figures are fantastic, so I definitely recommend them. So, um, I know this video is really long, but I want to show you guys all the detail here. So, let's get to the two other characters that I don't really care much about, so I'm not going to spend too much time with them. So, let's start with the uh, Marvel's Black Knight right here. So, here he is. Um, and uh, so, he does come with this little basic-looking sword. Here he is right there. Um... So, yeah, I don't know much about this character, really, but uh, there's the detail. I guess that's his logo or something right there, as you can see. Um, very old-school style character. Almost looks like he's straight out of, like, the, the Middle Ages or something. Uh, so the cape is removable. So, um, good or bad, you know, it's, it's not the tightest thing on there, so um, I kind of wish... Like, I don't, you know, for characters that have capes, I don't really think I would remove them because if they're supposed to have capes, they're supposed to have capes. So the fact that it's removable almost just makes it more annoying, in my opinion, but that's just me. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's the figure. Articulation-wise, pretty standard um, stuff, you know. It does not move up as much uh, because this piece is, is rather big, uh, but it does rotate around. Obviously, the cape is going to hinder a little bit of that articulation as well. Um, this whole piece does rotate, um, double joint the elbow there, um, and then, of course, the hand does rotate as well. This whole torso piece does move, rotates around, pretty standard stuff. Um, the legs as well, pretty decent amount of, of range, this whole thing turns it's it's really tight but it but it does turn i don't want to mess with it too much um double joint right there this entire boot rotates and then the feet pretty standard you know articulation right there so you get the idea um the other thing is this actually does come with a couple of different heads so um i guess there are alternate heads so i'll take this one off and attach this one instead so this one i guess he looks angry uh, and he doesn't have the little ear things right there. So there's that. Um, I don't know. I kind of prefer the ear things. He looks, I don't know. He just looks kind of weird, but I don't know. Uh, then you also have this piece right here, uh, which is, you can't see his, his face at all. He's just that giant helmet right there. And he's got that little eagle on top. Um, or whatever that is. Um, and that actually looks kind of neat. I, I think the detail on that's actually kind of cool. Like, how they're able to carve out some of the feathers and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that actually doesn't look too bad. Really interesting style right there. Um, so if anybody cares or knows much about the character, you'll know, you know, the different versions of it or, or whatever. But there he is. There's the Black Knight. So he actually comes with the right leg of Cull Obsidian. So there's that. All right. And then last but not least, we have, where is he? There he is, Malekith right here. So um, his weapon is very interesting. It's, it's pretty huge. It's a nice little blade, um, as you can see. So that looks pretty interesting. Uh, let's take that out for a second and focus on the figure itself. Um, very interesting style, half blue, half black face. Uh, very interesting character with the, the long flowing locks that he has. Um, and this whole entire character is just half, half different colors too. Like this red versus brown color, white and black. Then you have red over here and black on there. And kind of, it's, it's like a weird mismatch of colors, um, alternating and, and I don't even know what else. But, uh, 
Uh, and then blue and blue here. I don't know why this half is black, why isn't this black? I don't know anything about the character. I'm just commenting on what I see. The one annoying thing uh, already is this belt. I was saying earlier that I usually don't like belts that are just loose like that because they move around. On Ant-Man, it's pretty nice and snug. On this one, it's not. It's supposed to sort of sit below that like this, but it slides all around and stuff. So that's kind of annoying. Um, just keep that in mind. But articulation wise, the head uh, will sort of rotate all the way around, but this entire piece kind of comes with it. So these shoulder pads and this little necklace thing, this is all attached to the top piece right there. So it just looks really odd. Um, the, the arms don't really move up and down too much, uh, but they do rotate around. Um, double joint right there. You know, the hands you rotate. This moves up and down. This entire piece here does rotate around as well. Um, the legs have, you know, pretty standard articulation. You're just kind of uh, inhibited by the skirt thing a little bit, uh, but otherwise everything is pretty similar. Double joint right there. This entire piece does rotate and then pretty standard stuff for the feet. So um, there's that. So yeah, I don't know. Again, not really caring much for uh, for this character because I don't really know anything about it, but uh, very interesting look for sure. Now this character comes with the right arm of Cull Obsidian and the weapon of Cull Obsidian. I didn't notice that at first, but this was kind of hidden behind the figure in the packaging. So very crucial figure if you want to get the full Cull Obsidian build a figure. So with that being said, let's actually get to Cull Obsidian, right? So let's, we have all the pieces that I mentioned. So I'm gonna dump all the pieces right here and let's build this figure. So, um, we start with the main body right here and let's attach the legs. Um, so this is supposed to just slide right on, I guess. Yeah, looks like it's attached. Uh, so the way that the legs work is like the, uh, you see how it's sort of two nails and then or like two toes and then one on the side. So the one on the side that's pointing inwards is in the middle of the body. So same on this side. That's how you know which leg is which uh, in case you were, you were wondering. Okay, so that just kind of twists right in there as well. Um, very, very interesting. All right, then up top here, we're going to attach in the arm. Oh man, this thing is actually looking really cool. It already feels very menacing just because of how big this thing is. Oh man, all right. That's pretty sweet. Um, how does this arm piece... Oh, this is actually... Oh, okay. Whoops. So this actually goes around... Um, I think this actually goes here and then attaches in here. Hold on. Let me get the arm in first. I'm looking at the package uh, to make sure that I'm attaching it right. So yeah, so it looks like this is going to go like this. So there's a little hole in the back where that's gonna go in, and then this goes into this hole right here. So this actually goes around the arm and not under it or anything. So keep that in mind. Okay, very, very interesting. And then of course the head right here, and we are going to attach that right on. And let's bring in his his weapon right here. Oh man, this guy looks epic, I do have to say. <laughs> if if he'll actually be able to grip it. Or maybe, oh no, no. So this hand isn't as easy to grip it with. It looks like it goes in this hand. And that's what the packaging shows too. Oops, let's kind of slide this down a little maybe. Yeah, there we go. All right. So here we have Cull Obsidian. Um, wow, look at this guy. Look at this figure. If he will just stand up, I'm trying to make him stand. And we're good. Wow, that actually looks really cool. Um, he is big and menacing. Uh, yeah, wow, that is... He, and he's heavy too, because there's just a lot to him. Uh, really, really cool. That's just, man, that just looks awesome. So let's take an up-close look at the figure and all the detailing on it as well. So look at the face here, first of all. 
And uh, I mean, just look at the detail right there. They, they did a really, really nice job at all of the intricacies right there. That's just, uh, it's, it's beautiful. Like, just, just looking at the detail on this guy, like, this is so cool. Like, it's totally worth getting the build a figure just for the amount of detail on this figure. That's just awesome. The little shoulder piece looks like it has like scuff marks and damage marks, like he's truly been in battle. Um, that's really, really nicely done. So one leg has got this shield piece right here and one leg doesn't. And the back as well. They did not skimp on the detailing on this guy. Um, his weapon uh, is kind of basic looking uh, and a little cheap in comparison, but you know it, it's it's huge though, and it, like and it's very fitting of his size. So I think that certainly works. Um, but yeah, that's just awesome. Uh, articulation wise, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult. So the head does have a decent amount of articulation right there. The arm does rotate um, and moves up and down a little bit. This entire piece can turn, but it's so huge that it can't fully rotate. Um, his, this hand does bend a little bit, uh, so do have some range there, and the hand rotates. So the other arm is going to be very similar, except for the fact that you have the shoulder piece. So you have to be a little careful because you move it around too much, and it's going to start to pop out. So unfortunately, the right arm is a little limited in terms of uh, that movement, but you can bend at the elbow and, and stuff as well, so you do have that range. Um, the entire upper body can rotate around um, like that, and it does move up and down like so, a little bit side to side as well, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, the legs also have a good amount of uh, movement, actually. I'm kind of surprised about that, and they do rotate all the way around. Uh, double joint at the knee. And then the feet have um, a wide range of articulation as well. So I'm actually very impressed with uh, with what they were able to pull off with this, this Build-A-Figure here. So very, very nicely done. Um, so in comparison, just to really show you just how colossal this thing is, um, let me, if I can get them to just stand for a second. All right, there we go. Let me bring in some of the other figures that we just saw here. So let's bring in Thor right next to him. So there's there's Thor in comparison, uh, size-wise. So as you can see, he's definitely a decent amount taller. You know, and I'll bring in somebody like Ant-Man as well. So um, you can see the size difference. So it definitely makes him seem very, very menacing and tough uh, in, in comparison to these figures. So really, really nice. Uh, now what's actually cool is we actually have, from the first wave of figures, we have Proxima Midnight, who is one of the other Black Order members. So I'm going to bring her in here. Now she was a very tall figure, um, just on her own. But she's not as tall as Cull Obsidian. Um, and you can see, there they are together. And Wave 1's Build-A-Figure line was Thanos. So here he is, right there with his Black Order members. Um, Cull Obsidian is even bigger! Like, he's... yeah. I mean, obviously Thanos has got the Infinity Gauntlet, so it's not quite like a, a fair matchup, but, but he looks very menacing as well in comparison. Like, that just looks awesome. I think the scale of these figures is, is really, really nice. I hope that they release uh, Ebony Maw and... Uh, uh, gosh, who's the other one? Corvus Glaive, uh, at some point, because I would love to have the entire Black Order with Thanos. Like, I think this just looks awesome. All of these figures have been fantastic, and I think they're just, they're just killing it. Like, this is just really, really great stuff. So, yeah, guys, that's it. That's my review of Wave 2. I know this was a long video, but I just really wanted to show you all of these figures, and as you can see, Cull Obsidian is 100% worth it. I mean, that just looks awesome. If you're a fan of, of this figure, of this character from Infinity War, um, you, you gotta collect them all. I mean, Thor and Black Widow are great as is. Ant-Man and the Wasp are great as is. Malekith and the Black Knight, if you know about the characters, cool. If you don't, I still recommend getting them in order to complete Call Obsidian because the final product is totally worth it. So, hopefully you all enjoyed this review. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought as well. I haven't heard anything about a Wave 3, so I don't know if they're going to make one, um, but let me know if you've heard anything or 
what you would like to see in a Wave 3 as well. Um, I'm definitely curious to see if they do release more. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you later. So here we have uh, all of the Avengers Infinity War figures from Wave 1 and Wave 2 of the Marvel Legends series. Now, this doesn't include all the other side characters, I just wanted to focus on stuff from Infinity War. And as you can see, you can come up with a really, really cool display just as is. Lots and lots of great characters. Now I know Ant-Man and the Wasp are not in Infinity War, but uh, we can just imagine what might happen uh, if, if they were, just kind of add them to the display and just make it even cooler. So this is just awesome stuff and I really hope they release more of the figures. I want the rest of the Black Order. I want uh, another Bucky figure. I do have some of the Guardians of the Galaxy and I do have Black Panther. I don't have Doctor Strange, uh, but from previous sets, you know? So I kind of want an updated full Infinity War set. It would be fantastic. But hopefully you enjoyed the, these reviews of the Marvel Legends figures. If they release more from, from Infinity War, I will be getting those, so stay tuned for that. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you later.